Hi, Tim here from Proclaim AV, and today we're going to take a look at the Soundcraft UI16 Digital Mixer. Let's check it out. So the Soundcraft UI16 is kind of the middle of the UI series range. And the outside of it is pretty basic. It's not much more than a box where you plug in microphones, speakers, instruments, and everything else, headphones, etc. So we're going to take a look at the user interface, which is also called the UI, or sometimes called a GUI. Ooh, GUI reminds me of brownies. Anyway, we're going to look at the GUI and see how things are set up, how you can run things, what all the buttons, well, in this case, virtual buttons, do. Let's get started. Okay, so here we're looking at the main mix page, which is kind of like the main set of faders for your main speakers right here, all the way across on this. And you can see that we can adjust levels for every microphone right here. Okay, which is important to do. So that gives you fader levels. It gives you mute and solo buttons. Okay, for the setup here. And then it also gives you um, pan control for each microphone so you can pan back and forth. Okay, that's available on this whole front page. Now, if we click again, we're going to go to the gain page. And this is where we set gains. So much like an analog mixer, before we use this, we have to come in here and set our gain level for the microphone. Um, and then in this page, we can also turn on fan and power. For channels one and two, we can turn on high Z if we're going to use um, a high Z input. There is a um, phase button. And so that's all that's really happening in the gain page. So you only go in there when you need to adjust gain. Um, for a microphone. Now you'll notice that we get a nice level here when we're adjusting the gain. It shows us lots of level or not enough level or more level, less level. Okay, so that's a nice way for us to know what's happening when we're setting the gain for this microphone um, in the gain section. Now over here, uh, you can see that we have a bar that shows audio levels for this mic. Okay, we turn it down, gets lower, gets lower, turn it up, it gets higher. Now you may have noticed that there's a blue bar that's kind of behind that bar, and that is the gain level. It is showing audio levels, and then this is showing levels that we're sending to the main mix, okay? So we can edit a lot of things about each channel. Now, first of all, if I go down here, click and hold, or the right click and hold, left click and hold rather, I'm sorry, um, I can do a bunch of things. Um, there are channel presets. I can rename it. I can copy and paste settings from channel to channel. I can assign this into a subgroup. I can stereo link this channel with channel four if I want to. I can reset the channel and I can assign me, which has to do with the more me uh, setting. And so let's say I'm using the app for this channel and I'm mixing an aux mix. If I need to pick the channel that I'm singing on, click on it and click assign me and that's going to make my app work well because that'll give me control of my channel and then all the other channels because that app has a very basic mixing but it needs to know who you are so that's what assign me is about right now we're just going to rename this we'll call it tim's channel uh tim's mic probably fit better Okay, and then you can see it's named Tim's Mic. So, now once I've selected this tab down here, I can also go into Edit. And there are tabs across here. First is the EQ, so I can go in here, I can use my high pass filter. Okay. I can boost things or cut things just by dragging this and moving it. If I'm on a touch screen, I can pinch 
and make this narrower. Over here, I can use Q. Q is just the width of the EQ um, that you're using. If you're using a parametric EQ like this, you can adjust the width of your EQ. You can make it really ridiculously wide, or you can make it very precision and just kind of cut one frequency. This is good for feedback uh, cuts. You can make little sharp, narrow cuts uh, at particular feedback frequencies. You'll notice that as we play with it here, it shows different adjustments happening on the right. So the gain is how much we're cutting or boosting, and it shows that on the slider. Okay. And then the frequency, as we move across the spectrum here, it'll tell us what frequency we're at. Um, all the way up into the 22,000 kilohertz, all the way down to 20 hertz. Okay, so we can, we can grab any of these. And that doesn't matter. Like one can be over here and four can be over there. Um, it makes me kind of crazy that it happens like that, but don't think about them as high, mid, low. They just all are available, okay? Now let's say I have this set up and I'm like, oh, I want to re reset this. We'll just click here. Done. Back to flat again. Down here you have a bypass. So if you have the EQ on, but it's in the grayed out state, it's bypassed. If we unbypass it, then we can hear the EQ that we've applied. Okay. Then there's an RTA, and the RTA shows us real-time frequency analysis. Um, and you can see the frequencies listed down here, 22, 10, 5, 2. And that's really handy. If you have feedback, you're going to get a spike somewhere. Woo! And you just, when it does that, you bring a, an EQ over here. Woo! And you make yourself a nice little, um, I'm sorry for the fake feedback, but um, I don't have a way to make real feedback currently. <laughs> you can see that sort of helps actually because that's an actual frequency so um it's a good way for you to make a feedback cut using the rta each channel has its own you can turn it on and off there's an easy eq which just gives you three bands of fixed eq you can't change anything about them um they're very basic and so that's there if you want to do easy EQ. I prefer the other one, but that's because I like all the control. This is more like an analog EQ where you have fixed bands. Next is the dynamics section. And, you know, we don't have time to go through this whole thing um, because I've already done a whole video on it. So I'll put a little tab up here so you can click on it. But that is, I have a whole video on how to set up uh, gate and compressor and it shows this exact mixer so you can click over there if you're curious about using compressors and gates very cool now here on effect sends i can go through here on this tab and this will only assign my mic okay if i go over here then i can assign that mic into reverb but if i go over here then i can assign my mic into reverb dup -da -dup -da -doo. okay and it's important to note that this is the only tab on one of these somewhere, uh, on one of these channels, where you can go in and change the effects parameters. So if I click on this presets tab here, or just really anywhere on the unit, I get the presets. So I can go in here and load something. Load. All right. Then I can change parameters. Time. Time. All the different parameters okay are available there now each one has its own set of parameters there's some delay prefix uh, because there are four different effects units on here chorus there are chorus room you change room stuff load an office room boring okay so <laughs> and that's all right here so if i'm hey i'm in the office check it out also here, you can mute the effects, okay? But that's just for your channel. Because if you go to another channel, all right, it's just yours that are muted. And we'll look at the effects uh, later. Then auxiliary send, same thing here. I can set up my mic. And say I want to send my mic to aux 1 and aux 3. I can do that right here in this tab when I'm selected and I've clicked edit. I can also tell my mic your pre or a post fader mix um, right here as well in that mix because all the auxiliaries are set up to be individually channel assignable pre or post fader 
So that's really a nice feature. It lets you tell the uh, tell the auxiliary mix whether the main fader volume is going to affect the auxiliary mix. So if I turn this main fader all the way down, then in the auxiliary mix, uh, you won't be able to hear me, even though I'm in one or whatever. Uh, if my main fader is down and I'm in post fader, you won't be able to hear me. If I'm in pre-fader and I turn my volume all the way down, I can still turn it up in the auxiliary too, even if my main volume is down over here. Okay, sorry, too many clicks. Even if my main volume is down here, um, it'll still be up in a pre-fader mix. Okay, so apparently I forgot here to look at a couple of features here in channels one and two. This is available on one and two. Uh, if you go to edit, there's an extra tab here that's not in the others, and it is the Digitech amp modeling. And so here you can pick different kinds of guitar amplifiers, and it will sort of simulate that. And then you have um, sort of a, a kind of a pedal board layout deal here um, to run the different um, effects. And so that is available on channels one and two. So also you can turn the high Z input on and off right here. And you can save, there are presets here for the amp modeling. Same thing as when I clicked here on the face of that. So, you know, it's just click and load. It tells you what it is. Um, and then you can change the cabinet down here if you want to. So you can change the head and the cabinet. Then there are adjustments in here for um, gain, level, bass, mid, and treble. And then you can turn the modeling on and off using the switch right here. So we did the edit and we looked at all the channels in there. Okay. And then, so let's go over to auxiliary sends. And this is another way to mix. So in this, much in the same way when you're on the main page and you mix all these faders for the main speakers, okay? When I go to the Oxen page, I get a whole nother mix that I can create just for the auxiliary one, okay? So here I've named my auxiliary one live stream. Now I can't do that right here. <laughs> Again, I have to go to edit. Um, no, there's another place we'll go. So let's go look at that. Here, auxiliary sends. Um, I have to go over to here and click, and then I can name it, okay? I can't name it up on this tab. So if I go to here, click, hold, then I can go in here, I can copy, I can stereo link, I can reset the channel. Um, I can assign my out, which is for the app again, and then I can rename the channel right over here, okay? So this is named live stream. Now, something to note is that when a channel is muted, um, either pre or post, that mute stays on. And that is a deep, dark setting. I'll show you where to set it up. Um, and it needs to be engaged. Because what you don't want is you when you mute a channel, you don't want it somehow available on another mix. Um, because that can be, that can cause an, uh, more feedback or an odd situation, especially on a live stream, you don't want that channel you think be muted and it's not really muted. It needs to be muted everywhere when you click mute. So I'll show you where that's located. So there are four auxiliary mixes here, two, three, and four, where you can go through and set levels however you want them to be um, for each mix. And there are four outputs on the front of the unit. So there's an auxiliary five and six, and those are you can use your headphone jacks on the front as auxiliary outputs, and that's also assignable in the settings. All right, so here, effect sends. Same thing that we were at before, but we can put uh, me into the office. Hello, I'm in the office. Um, notice that here I can pick which effects unit I want to put my mic into. They're different colors. So here's the reverb one. If I want reverb on my mic, then I select the reverb effects and then turn my mic up in reverb. Make sense? I can do multiple too, which gets really confusing, confusing, confusing because, because all these effects, all are, these happening effects are happening at the same time. Same time. Same time. Same time. Now, 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 if effects get out of control, out of control, control there's an all effects all mute, effects mute over, here over here under the, under the UI. UI. Uh, 
Okay, we'll talk about the UI here in a minute. <laughs> so those are the effect sends, and it's the same thing. Add whatever mic you wanted to delay, add whatever mic you wanted to chorus, add whatever mic you wanted to room, and then as you click across them, you'll notice that you can go in here, you can rename it if you want to, um, and you can reset the channel and all the uh, features that are available down there on that tab. You just got to select here. And also, each one, notice this is muted uh, because I hit the all mute, and it's what it just does is it mutes all the outputs here. So I can unmute it if I want to right here. Okay. And then I can control how much of it there is. So if I want just a little bit of volume or a lot of volume, this volume control here under the refurb, under the effect sense, under each tab, is the master volume control for that. Okay. Let's go on to the play button here, which is something we haven't talked about. And I have a thumb drive plugged in here, and I have um, um, a file. So if I hit play, I can play back music. Okay, and over here is my um, player, are my player controls. They pop up here. They're also on the main page, right there. Player controls. Okay. Um, they're available on Auxense, so I can send them to Auxiliary. Okay. I'm going to drag it over here a little so we can see that. So I can send it to auxiliary. Um, I don't... Oh, I can send them to effects. Weirdly enough. Uh, so there you go. So that's the player function. Right here, I think I'm talking. That's the basic. Yeah, so... And then I can mute, I can solo, I can do all that stuff. This is a recording from when I did the well, other video. Uh, doing the compressor. Then I can stop here. Also, right here, I have the ability to stop and start the play. This little button right here, which is nice. And this one does record, which I don't want to do because you're listening to the recording right now. So I don't want to go away. All right, so we've gone all across here. Let's go back to this one because I don't think we talked about it. And this one is interesting because it shows what's happening all across the mixer. So first of all, you've got level meters. You can tell what channels are muted with a little red block here, M. What channels are soloed. What channels have phantom power turned on. You can see what channels have a compressor going. What channels have a gate going. Um, you can see which channels have the high Z engaged. There's only two that will do that. Um, and here you can clear all the solos. You can mute everything. You can mute the, yeah, effects, mute the effects or unmute or the effects, unmute the effects from, here. from here. Um, and then you can engage mute groups, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but that's all available on this tab. Here are the mute groups, and we've already set one up that mutes everything except my mic, and it's on button one, and then two, two through six, we haven't set anything up on them yet, but that's a mute group, so if we click on the mute group preset button, it'll mute everything but my mic, um, so nothing else is happening. This is a view group. And this is cool. If we go into a view group, let's just go into two, for example, and say, hey, I want mics one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, because I like odd numbers. And just the left of this and the right of this, chorus effects, group three, and aux three. Okay, now I've built a custom group, okay? And we'll show you how that works here in a minute. And then here are the subgroups. So we can assign um, subgroups. Um, and, and build subgroups if we want to do that, and then they'll be on the on each fader. Okay. So, those are those tabs all across here. Got it. Now, finally, let's go over here to the UI tab. And in the UI tab, we can do some things that are interesting. Here we can just look at inputs. Okay. Uh, or we can just look at effects returns only, which are all muted right now. Hello. Okay, we can look at the subgroup faders. Okay. And you can see that one thing is muted into the subgroup. So that's the only thing on that subgroup. This subgroup fader now will control whatever is assigned into subgroup one. So like if I assign more mics into subgroup one, this can become a master fader for those subgroups. Make sense? Okay. So if I had three choir mics, over here and see it says here I, since I went into that subgroup I have three mics assigned and they all say S1, S1 um, 
S1, S1. So that's my subgroup, okay? Um, and so I can turn those volumes up and down here, okay? Or I can go over here to subgroups and I can use this volume to turn that whole group of, ch of channels up and down with one control or mute them. Uh, so that's how the subgroup faders work. Um, they're, and they're automatically routed into main. Okay, so there's no routing available on them. They're just, if you assign something to a subgroup, automatically it's in that subgroup. If you want to take it back out of the subgroup, you've got to go back over here to subs and unselect all the things that we put into the subgroup. Okay, go back over to UI, click subgroups, and now you can see there's nothing coming in the subgroup because there's no volume, and then this doesn't affect my mic volume at all. All right? So those are subgroups. Aux masters, these are just the master volume controls for the auxiliary outputs. Uh, you can you can mute them all here. You can do whatever you want to do with them. Um, you know, aux masters is just a quick way to get to them. This UI is just a quick way to get to a lot of things. All right, so we talked about view groups. And so over here are the view groups. If I select this button, it toggles between mute groups and view groups. This group of preset button. So the view groups, if I hit number one, you can see that in number one, I have one, two, my mic, four, player, reverb. We made that weird view group. Okay, let's look at that. Okay, that's all the odd channels, line left, player right, chorus, group three, aux three. Okay, so that's really handy. If you have channels that you're not using, especially if you're using a tablet and you don't have a big screen, and the thing that you want to do is sort of collapse that down and just have the controls you want, then just go over into view groups, which again is here and here, put the things you want into the view group and leave out the things that you don't need to look at in the view group. Um, and you're good to go. And you can always reset a view group and then it'll say no assigned channel. So let's, you know, let's put a couple channels in there and um, this, okay. So you can build up to six custom view groups and then go over here in the UI, click view groups, and then click two, and it'll just put the things that you want to see in here in this view group and the things that you need to access um, readily. View groups are the same idea. Um, so let's get out of that view group because then we'll get confused by the, by the uh, thing here. Just unselect it and you go back. Okay. Mute groups are the same thing, except we're muting certain microphones. So you notice when I click that, we muted a bunch of stuff just automatically. In fact, I think this mutes everything. Mute groups are, are a very handy option. If there's nothing in there and you click, you'll notice it tells you nothing has been assigned. Um, to unmute this, again, unclick it and you'll be back to where you were before. Notice that there were some things that were muted. And then when we muted um, with the mute group, um, they have an extra M, which means they were muted before um, mute group one was engaged. Okay. All right, there's a tap tempo button. I quite frankly don't know how to do the tap tempo with effects. That is beyond me, so have fun. Then the effects mute button, which you did before. And then there's the mute everything button. And it's nice that it gives you a warning, so. And then the more me button, uh, this shows what the app looks like. So it'll, it'll show your volume when you're listening, you know, to the auxiliary mix in the auxiliary mix, you have like your volume and then you can change levels here and you can do more of you or more of everybody else. Um, so that is what that's about with the more me app. It lets people mix their own auxiliary mix if they have monitors or something. So. Okay, let's pop back out of there. All right. The last thing we're going to look at is settings. Now, you can get yourself into quite a bit of trouble here, and so if you don't know what you're doing, then don't click things there. Um, oh, I'm going to have to blur stuff like that. You can set a master password. Um, you can set up what levels of um, access you want people to be able to have. Um, so if you don't want people to be able to get into global settings, for example, then you can lock that out by enabling a password. And this may be not a bad idea. Then here in shows, you can load or save a show. So we're on a show, we're on a level right now with a show. So we can go in here and we can say, hey, save a new one. And we could call it Bob. Hello, Bob. And we'll save show number Bob. 
um and he's there's bob right there and so let's say hey we're gonna save a, a scene a snapshot so it'll be uh round one okay that's nice and then uh, oops and then we can save another snap snapshot round uh, we'll see, keep it consistent too okay some of that's making you crazy and now you can change between the snapshots just pick a snapshot and hit load and it'll load and it'll tell you which one it just loaded okay they're exactly the same so it shouldn't affect anything here all right and then under settings here there's a lot of things but i wanted to show you something and that is um, something called ox send mute inheritance and i think you want this on and what it means is that if you mute in the main mix you also mute the ox mix if it is off you can mute the main mix but the aux mix won't be muted and that can be really kind of embarrassing let's say you mute pastor's channel for the auditorium but then he's having a private conversation with somebody during the um invitation or or before or after the service and it could be live on the live stream okay so come in here and set your aux send mute inheritance to on um so that whenever you mute something it mutes it everywhere okay that's important and you can change a lot of ways the meters work and how things are. There's also something kind of cool, which is this button function here, um, which are these two buttons right here. Right now they're set up for play and record, okay? But you can change them. Now, remember we just set a couple snapshots. You could put this next snapshot, previous snapshot on the button, okay? Now let's try that. Previous snapshot. Oh, we've loaded round one. Okay, previous snapshot. Oh, round two. And it just sort of scrolls through the snapshot. I'll go back to two. I'll go back to one. I'll go back to two. Okay. So that's kind of cool. If you're using snapshots, that's a, a nice thing to set up here so that you have um, previous and next snapshots instead of record play. I'm going to put mine back on record play just because I'm used to it that way. You can change from English to Chinese, I think. Um, don't quote me. I do not speak such languages. I'm a one language person and that is me. Oh, over here is um, also if you want to turn your, um, oh, where is that? Oh, your headphones out. If you want to turn your headphones out into auxiliary outputs, click here to aux. And so now if I go over to aux sends, you'll see that I have aux sends five and six available. So if you need two more aux sends and you don't need headphone jacks because there are two on the front, then that's the setting uh, where you want to go in and do that. Okay. I'm going to put that back on headphones because I'm actually listening via headphones right now. So hopefully I could hear me say that. Uh, never mind. Okay. So those are, you know, a couple options. You can do multiple solos at once. If you want to put that mode on, you can make your solo after fader or before the fader, pre fader, after fader. Um, and so there, are, you know, a lot of different features and functions in here and about just tells you a firmware version and that kind of thing. So, wow, I think we've sort of like done all of the stuff. Um, so hopefully that was helpful. I know it's a whirlwind walkthrough of this particular mixer, but hopefully that has been helpful to you, um, to familiarize you with all the different tabs all the things that they do, all the features that are available. Um, and so that'll hopefully be a help to you. There's just so much stuff in here. There are so many awesome features in here. And um, I hope that that walkthrough was useful.